Good morning, guys. You totally caught me talking about rocks. I'm talking about malachite, azurite, chrysocolla, and basically copper oxide minerals. I love these because working in copper mines for years, I learned a lot about them. I got to see so many different versions of them and collected them as well. So that was amazing to me. I fascinated with these beautiful blue green minerals. Some of the coolest mineral specimens inside of copper mines that I've found have been like a huge trifecta of uh, different amalgamations of the minerals I'm talking about. Uh, like this one included today, it has azurite, malachite, chrysocolla, and I'm sure there's some other things in there too. There might even be some brochantite and that kind of a thing. Oh my gosh, my cats are trying to get out of the window. That's cool. If you guys are new to this series, this is one take. I don't do cuts, so you guys are seeing this as it is, exactly what happens. So if there are distractions or things that just happen, you're going to see them too. I'm not cutting these out, including me having allergies. Oh, man. Like, everything's blown around today. Anyways, getting to this. The formation of this happens because of the breakdown of sulfide minerals, such as chalcopyrite and boronite, copper-bearing sulfide minerals. What happens is when those sulfide minerals, I don't have one handy, are, do I? No, I don't, are uh, exposed to oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water, they oxidize and they break down due to weathering. Now, meteoric water within chalcopyrite will create its own acid, meaning that it will break down that mineral itself and then it goes and just leaches down into the ground. Cool, cool little, uh, I, said, I suppose, drawing here, if you can see this, and hopefully my phone doesn't like flip it. Anyways, consider this to be a copper porphyry. You have your bottom down here, which is never really affected by water, but you have your water lines. So you have your leach cap line, which means everything that's pretty much been eaten away, there's no minerals left in this line. Then you have your, your super reduced area right in here, which means that this is exposed to water and air. It's not completely leached out. It, the, all of your oxides, all of those pretty blues are going to be within this area due to the leach cap weathering out. So all your sulfide minerals that were in this leach cap area have been exposed to that water and that oxygen. They flow down as the water level drops, I guess they would be uh, in, in solution at this point I should not have the lead out on my pencil. And then they get into this section and then they have a chance to precipitate out. So as the water dehydrates off of this entire system, after it's leached out from up here, you start to precipitate out these beautiful blue minerals. And they form up against the porphyritic rock. This one is definitely attached to the rock on the bottom. So is this one, you can see that a little bit better. It's a quartz monzonite that is on the bottom of this rock. Oh, you can see some a little bit right there. It's got a lot of manganese staining on it, creating that black, some magnesium probably in there as well. Anyways, these beautiful blue minerals start to form because of this process. <clears throat> Once they leach out when it's like the best situation, you'll get a combination of just the mineral itself. You can see this one has a blues, greens, all of the swirls in there together, which just means it had all of the right components. Uh, azurite has a little bit more copper in it than malachite does. And I, they both have the same amount of like carbonates in them and water and that kind of a thing. But the blue just means the azurite, it has more copper in it. That, that's as simple as that. The, you would think that malachite being green would have more copper, but it doesn't. Anyways, this is just straight up malachite. You can start to see how it like radiates out. Uh, it has a very conchoidal fracture, but you've seen those really polished, beautiful pieces of malachite before and how they have those little polished spheres oh, like that botroidal feature that's kind of what this has i'm hoping that the camera is picking this up really well and it's not distorting it this is just a big solid chunk of malachite 
so there's no azurite in this. It just had a chance to form at the perfect condition only to form malachite. Now these minerals, since they are a carbonate mineral, and with the copper being inside, they are acid soluble. So sulfuric acid will basically melt these down to put them in solution. And that's actually how they extract copper from these. All of the oxides get crushed, they get put on a leach dump, acid gets put over them, sulfuric acid, and then that acid drains into vats and then you create a PLS or a pregnated leach solution, which then goes to an SXW or a um, solution extraction electro winning process and then they extract it and they make big beautiful copper plates. Anyway, that's the, the real quick oxide version of what happens to copper in the mine. Anyways, interesting fact about azurite, if you heat treat it, like the crystals, when you get actual azurite crystals, they'll turn black, which is kind of interesting. I just thought that was a little fun fact. Um, another copper mineral that forms with these guys, if you get like the a pregnated leach solution that is after malachite and azurite have already been formed, say they, they break down naturally from more water just sitting there, plus more sulfides that have had acid react with them, and it leaches down and it starts to break this up, you get something called calcanthite. And I do have some in the house. It's extremely, extremely fragile to oxygen and sunlight. It turns to white powder if you're not careful. But calcanthite is a very interesting mineral that can be found with the reduction of uh, already oxidized minerals. And something that I wanted to show you that happens or that forms. Oh, can't, will you be able to see this? You see those teeny tiny fine hair minerals? Now I'm probably going to say this wrong, but it's called arichalcite, and it's basically a fibrous copper mineral. It has these little teeny tiny fine hairs, arichalcite. I really hope that I'm even doing that a little bit of justice. But this also forms within the oxidation zone right there of that like super, super, I'm losing my uh, train of thought, but the super reduced area after the leach cap. I actually had to look back at my little notes because I'm just like, huh? I forgot, I forgot all of a sudden. Boy, the traffic is like so heavy today. This is a very like distracted video almost. Anyways, these are more rare to find these very, I'd say fuzzy minerals. You, you don't really see those too often. They usually get destroyed unless you find like big bugs of it. I have a couple pieces. I was lucky enough to be able to get some giant pieces working for different copper mines. And I'm, I'm grateful to have them. I love them. They're part of my permanent collection. They're very cool. Have I forgotten anything that I wanted to say or would like to say about these? Other than they're beautiful, I've only found very few tabular azurite crystals and they've been in the most random of places and they're usually at abandoned mines. Um, no, I think that's, that's it as far as these guys go. Yeah. So you guys totally caught me talking about minerals. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, well, I guess. You guys all haven't told me yet if within this series, if you want me saying, hey, you totally caught me talking about rocks or minerals, or if I should just say talking about rocks and then inform you it's a mineral. Random thought, tangent, these are the things that go through my brain. Thank you guys. Bye.